Nasreen and I, as I said, were very good friends, and there's a number of things that we developed together. People don't know this, we have never talked about it, especially the photography. Yes. For her, photography uh, was not important. She did it, she never wanted to show it. And she did her own printing, and it was a one off thing. Mm. And the thing is that the early things that are you in this book, did, sorry, uh, the she photographs. Didn't make it, she didn't make editions, just no, single print. Editions. Is that right? And she never wanted to show them. It was just completely. Uh, she said they were not good enough. She was very exacting on herself. So she never ever showed these uh, photographs. It was much later after she passed away that Altaf, her brother, did exhibit them because mm -hmm. they wanted to raise money to make that first monogram. And the photograms uh, were because we were working together in the dark room, which was uh, in Baroda also, as well as here in Bombay, there was the vision exchange workshop started by Akpa Padamsi. And there we were, we used to do some amount of, uh, so there was a lot of exchange with Nasreen and, uh, there are yeah. two things that I was yeah. particularly interested in, and these are your collaborations with women. Mm -hmm. uh, so coming out of Bhulabhai Institute and Bombay in the 70s, in the 80s, there is, you're coming together with the other three women artists, Arpita Singh, right. Nilima yeah. Sheikh, yeah. and Madhvi Parikh. Yeah. And 1984 seems to be some sort of a watershed year, because this is uh, the year when uh, there is Indira Gandhi's assassination, and there the is riots. there are the big riots yeah. which mark uh, public violence on mm. the same scale as we had at the time of partition. Yeah, uh, this is when yes. uh, Nilima Sheikh paints, uh, when Champa grew up. Yes. There are shifts, there's a big shift in Arpita Singh's painting as well. That's right. Now you come together with, this, with these three close friends of yours and uh, you continue to show over a decade and a half or almost yeah. two decades. But there is no formulation uh, or an ideological mooring or a feminist uh, sort of uh, a statement which binds you together. This was no, one, no, and the other no. was your grouping uh, in theatre with Alaknanda Samarth right, and the yeah. kind of work that you yeah, do, yeah. very expansive theatrical productions. Perhaps you can talk about these two formations. Well, uh, the, the history of that collaboration with the three other artists that you mentioned, uh, it all started with a very ambitious idea that I had. I, I wrote out a list of 50 artists women artists and I said this is a like you know we, we nobody's coming out and I wrote to Arpita we used to write postcards to each other this was 15 paisa and then phones were too expensive so I sent off this postcard and I said how about it she deliberated she said I've deliberated <laughs> <laughs> and I've come to the conclusion that now I have a little baby owl in my garden who thinks I'm his mother and I've now decided to call him Pasca and he holds my, he, she, she always wears a sari, so the palu, he, he follows me around and this all that postcard said. <laughs> so she was trying to tell me, you are stupid. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think he was going to? Then again, she, I get another postcard saying, four people. We can manage four people. Because <laughs> Nasreen didn't want to be part of this. I tried very hard to persuade her, but Nasreen said, I am an artist. I don't want to be called a woman artist, which is also, mm -hmm. she had a point. So then it was the four, and how do we do it? Because as I said, we had no money and we didn't want a gallery involved. That was very important. We did not want a gallery involved. We would do it ourselves. And so we chose small format works, watercolors. What year was this? This was, we started in 84. Oh, 84. 84 to 89, we, we, we had these, we had five shows. And I must tell you that, there have been uh, men who came together to make groups. Um, and there's of course the progressives, and there was the, the group of Swaminathan, 80, 80 90. whatever. The two or three groups like this came together. But they only had one or two. Yeah, yours so has been we the longest. Continued throughout. <laughs> and the ideology was more that we craved for each other's criti criticism. Mm. So we became very important for each other as audience. And did that work in practice, that there was that worked extremely active well. critique of each other's yes, work? No, but it wasn't a formalized thing, you can't do that with artists. Mm -hmm. So we'd be sitting at our own exhibitions minding the show, and then we would talk, and says, you know, suddenly you would say, mm -hmm. you know, in one lazy afternoon, nobody is there in the gallery, that blue Arpita tells me, it's too raw. You should have worked on that blue. <laughs> and you know, it was done with a great amount of generosity. Yeah. With the real feeling that we are trying to work together to make our work better, you know. 
So this was, uh, and then of course through the work itself we talk about literature, we talk about theater and so many other aspects. Was there a formal structure by which you met or had these conversations or was, just, was you shared a space? We, yeah, that's more like a, That structure was more like on the, going on the trains, you know, and with our babies, you know, and our hips and have sitting around and, you know, and yeah, correct, you know, and then you start to open up the world because all of it we did ourselves, unpacking, packing everything, and then suddenly you take out a work and say, oh, I didn't realize this, I'm holding it in my hand and I see that this is happening, look, Karpita, you know, or look, Nelima. Mm -hmm. So these were the discoveries we made from the works themselves, it was an adventure. But you all individually have uh, remarkably developed on an aesthetic language which is unique to your, your practice, to Arpita's practice, mm -hmm. certainly to Nilima's practice. That's Nilima true. looking at the miniature, Arpita looking yeah, at... Congress, yes, yeah, yeah. strong European influences, but also yeah. very strong yeah. as, uh, you know, aesthetic of feminism in her work. Mm -hmm. And you with your vast uh, inclusions of literature, theatre and cinema. Yeah. And everyone has developed a language of, uh, again, of violence, contemporary right. violence, yes. and brought it into these yeah. aesthetic fields with Great, great skill. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but even in terms of, you know, if you take 70s feminism in the West, and then if you think about 1984 in New York, you had Jenny Holzer and Barbara yes. Kruger, and women who were really trying to infiltrate the mass media yes, through its yes. own yeah. tools and yeah. languages. Yeah. And so given your own interest in finding a public for your work, um, how did that balance with having this intimate space where, as you say, you're bringing, you know, you're almost celebrating your own role as women, as mothers, finding right. a space to develop a language that is your own. And I think about Liz Rhodes a lot, the British filmmaker who um, in 76 was invited to be in the Film as Film show at the Hayward and was the only woman out of something like 80 artists who was invited, so she pulled her work and ended up writing a catalog essay with approximately a dozen women instead, and they actually fought this idea that their language had to be that of the establishment. They wanted to find their own language. So I'm just thinking about the role of language, you know, at that period in the 80s in particular, um, which I think women were finding a, to be a very powerful tool in the West. Um, is that something that had currency with the four of you at that time. We, we were, in these dialogues that we had, I think this is what we were uh, trying to aim at. Mm -hmm. And also the other thing was that we chose to exhibit in public spaces. Mm -hmm. Public spaces in the sense like the Jahan, there's the Jahangir Art Gallery where people come. It's not a gallery, it's not a commercial gallery, it's just a hall. Mm -hmm. And similarly in Bangalore and Delhi as well, we were showing in Trivedi. So these are public spaces, not, uh, you know, uh, so that was very important that people, and we were sitting there. So th that was important, talking to people. You also address um, the historic uh, uh, presence of women in art and literature. You've had this interesting yes. sort of dialogue, yes. Nelini, yes. Artemisa Gentileschi, Ravi Varma's Galaxy of Musicians. It's a wonderful painting of women artists yes. and, and the way you use it in uh, unity and diversity with a completely yes. subversive intention. Yes. Uh, and obviously the internalizing, would you like to talk a little bit about this process of the internalization of say a Brecht, Brechtian play like The Job or Medea and its recontextualization in the kind of reality that you uh, occupy? Well, uh, there's lots of questions in that. <laughs> um, the, um, the, uh, the job. The job. Uh, the job, of course, has its protagonist. It's a, it's a, it is a woman who is the protagonist. And uh, if you look at what uh, Brecht uh, wrote about the job, and I think he, uh, he, what he did often was he chose an event that had taken place, actually, uh, it, probably even from a newspaper. And this was in 1993, uh, 1923, during the Depression in Germany, in a town called Breslau, and there was this extreme poverty, and uh, uh, a woman's husband dies, and uh, she's left bereft without any means of income. So she takes, she impersonates him and takes the job. But then she's found out, and the fact that jobs were scarce, and so she was actually prosecuted on the grounds and as Brecht writes, because she didn't have the vital organ between her legs. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> so uh, that was a woman oriented and the thing is that even if we take that as the moment then mm -hmm. even till today there are people saying the same thing we are not even getting the same types of salaries or we are not getting even at the, every now and again you see in the papers that at, at auction as well women artists don't do as well as the male artists it's almost a, not a, a belief or a faith in a woman you know so it will be a really a big thing if Hillary wins this election in the United States. It's going to be quite a turn. So I think that the, the, the thing is that feminist thought, feminine thought of, or, and masculine thought, I think this is the balance that I always speak about as, as not really contained within each gender, but it exists in all of us. That, that uh, I mean, I can speak from a masculine point of view at some point, as we've known uh, figures like Thatcher speak from that masculine point of view. But I think it's that balance that we really have to think about. And I think that uh, femininity and femi feminine thought is not being given enough of its value. I think that's where perhaps something called progress could take place. Mm -hmm. I think that that, uh, because the, um, the fact that the woman does bear the child, you know, and that is an important thing. The gender doesn't affect the reception. I think it does affect, even now. Even a Shilpa Gupta, Shilpa Gupta or a Pushpamala. Yeah, I mean, Shilpa Shilpa Gupta. consider Shilpa Gupta. for a moment that the NGMA had Subodh Gupta, they had Atul, and they're going to have Sudarshan. They had Manali Mukherjee. That was a freak. <laughs> <laughs> It was really because this lady Manju, she pushed it, but uh, it was really a, a, a free To be fair, I mean, you know, the recent wave of Western, major Western museums doing shows about India, it tended to either be what I call mise-en-scene shows, which, you know, like yeah. Indian superhighway and these kinds of things, you know, or Century City at Tate Modern, or it was Amrita Shergill. And right. so somehow Amrita mm. Shergill was the one person, the one artist that would get monographic shows in the West for the last And I'm very years. surprised. Let me tell you, yes. I don't know if it has to be on video, but I'm very surprised. You don't read her very highly as No, but she was too young, and, and also the work is academic. Mm. It's the salon. Mm. I'm sorry she died so young, but and probably later on she could have done some spectacular things. But that great promise still remains a promise, mm. you know. I'm sorry to say, I mean, people will kill me for this. <laughs> no, no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have not heard any critique on uh, the work. And she was, you, I compare the beginning of this nation with Mexico. If you just do that, you have a whole other scenario. You had Frida and you had Amrita. They lived, they're eight years apart in age. Then Diego came back. All the people who were exiled in, in, in France, in Paris, came back to reconstruct a new country. The older generation of India left Akbar, Raza, Souza, they all left the country. I mean, here's a new country. And this is why I came back. I, had, I was for two and a half years in Paris. And it was very easy at the time for an Indian to stay on in Europe. But uh, I mean, I, it was in the 70s. And I said, you know, this is a new nation. This is where we're going to do things. 